if humans on Earth want to evolve, want to see the realization of their soul, want to live for hundreds of years and keep the divine form of their body and keep the divine state of their soul. They need to achieve forgiveness because storing resentment inside can literally kill you. In fact, majority of cancers are caused by it, by stored, deep stored resentment inside. It can indeed poison you to the extreme of killing you. And it doesn't matter how many things you do to have a healthy lifestyle, because the power of your emotions is a hundred times stronger than anything else you do. You will see and for sure you have heard of many people who have healed from cancer just because they could forgive whatever who hurted them or because they could forgive themselves. And those who get right of cancer because of surgery or because of other kinds of physical therapies, if they don't work on that resentment which created the cancer on the first place, the cancer will reappear in some way. But forgiveness cannot be imposed. That's the mistake many religions make and many spiritual communities. They say you have to forgive to be on the path of God. You have to forgive otherwise you are not a good person. Or even sometimes some of you feel that to be good means to let others hurt you and sacrifice. Some people, they just speak about forgiveness to reinforce their religious identity. Just thinking about their own image and their own ego. But to force somebody to forgive and smile when that person is being hurted means not being empathic and understanding towards that person who have been hurted. To force somebody or to force yourself to forgive is the perfect way to never achieve true forgiveness. Rage is an emotion which is rejected by many of you and deeply repressed inside. And yes, rage is a destructive energy and it can indeed destroy everything around. But rage can also be a purifying fire which purifies and illuminates darkness. The fire of rage can indeed kill you and can even kill others. But it can also be a healing light which is clarifying all which have been painful and dark. I will tell a story to explain something with an example. A man was abused by his father when he was a kid. If that kid never expressed any rage about it, if that kid just bottles up all the suffering and never speaks and just says that he forgave it and just smiles, that man is accepting the darkness of what happened, is just swallowing that darkness. And when you swallow the darkness, it becomes part of you. And that man will put that darkness out and will live a dark life in some way or another. Because he accepted that he has no value, that he deserved to be treated that way, he will maybe, as an adult, turn up to be the abuser. He will change roles and he will now be the abuser because that power is the only thing which will make him feel that he has some value. If he doesn't do that, he will keep abusing himself in many other ways. Even when his father is not here anymore, he will find for abusive partners or he will just take drugs or fall into alcoholism. In both of the situations, the darkness will get perpetuated on himself and on others. And some families have that cycle of inheriting the same kind of abuse and repeating it again and again. Now what happens if that man can express the deep rage he feels about what happened to him? 
if he can feel deeply angry at his dad. When he does that, he's somehow recognizing that he does have value, that he didn't deserve to be treated that way. That man, by getting angry at his father, is having compassion towards himself. And once he can have compassion towards himself and can heal, then he will be able to forgive his father and to also have compassion towards his father. In that case, in that example, the fire of anger has purified the pain that man went through when he was a kid. And just by welcoming that anger, he can truly forgive. Some people, they feel guilty to feel angry. And they don't understand that feeling that anger is what is leading them into a path of compassion. That doesn't mean you have to spend all your life angry, not at all. It just means you have to express it, to cleanse yourself. And use it, as I told you, as a purifying fire and as a boundary between light and darkness. Sometimes you need these strong energies to set a boundary where the darkness cannot come in. Give yourself full permission to feel anything you are feeling. And when you have fully felt all your emotions, when you have put all this anger out, the only thing you will see left in your spirit is forgiveness and love. Because that is what you are made of. Some people, they feel afraid of looking too deep inside their soul or just looking too deep inside their emotions, inside themselves, because they feel they are going to find something bad. Because maybe they have been repressing some very heavy emotions. But the truth is that when they look inside, inside themselves, when they feel their emotions, once they have done it, they are just left with peace. After all that heavy emotions, they just find goodness. It's difficult to feel negative emotions. It's difficult to go to this storm of negative things sometimes. But believe me, when you let this storm pass, you will be left just with a calm, beautiful sea. Don't feel afraid about crying, about getting angry, or about feeling negative emotions towards people that you feel you should love and that your mind is telling you that you should love them. In some cultures on earth, parents are worshipped. Like if you have more value, if you just like everything that your parents do. And you may have been raised with the idea that you should just feel grateful. But in fact, by letting your anger out, you may break the cycle of pain which have been going on from many generations. And once you have healed, you will be able not just to be a better parent than your, than your parents were, but you will also be able to love them way more for who they really are and to actually accept them. Please don't let your fixed and programmed ideas about what goodness have to look like. Don't let that ideas stop you from healing. Speak about what happened to you, what hurted you, put it out and look for therapies which are energetic. Therapies which can help you physically release all the emotions which are stored in your muscles, in your organs, in your cells. There is therapies which are using specific breathing techniques or pressure points for you to be able to liberate your physical body from that pain and rage. Because as our body is a manifestation of our emotions and our frequency, all the bad experiences get physically imprinted on you and you have to use your physical body to let that experiences go mentally in fact this physical body is a tool you have to move on from many painful experiences if you were pure spirit 
the pain, the low vibration you experience when you are suffering will just expand and expand and it will be way more difficult to overcome it. Your body is like a container of those experiences but it's also a good container because through that you can keep it and then let it go and throw it away. Just by crying you are purifying your physical body and you are letting go of many things. Of course just talking about your experiences will already have a physical effect on you will already liberate your body. Just don't forget to also liberate yourself physically, to cry, to scream if it's necessary. To unlock your chest with pressure points and let all those stored emotions out. This is the first, the very first step of forgiveness. Don't think that because of allowing yourself to be angry, that because of feeling anger you are not forgiving because you are doing the opposite as this is the first step to reach real forgiveness. Don't judge your emotions, accept yourself with absolutely everything you are feeling. When you give yourself permission to actually feel everything that is inside of you that is the only way you can liberate yourself and that is the only way you can start to forgive and always be extremely compassionate with yourself and respect your timing because even if you have heard it many times it's just the truth the way you treat yourself is the way you're going to treat others and for that exact reason you can practice the second step which is understanding those who hurted you because they were feeling probably as bad as you were feeling you cannot give something if you don't have it first you cannot give a vibration of abuse and pain if you are not in this vibration yourself let's say you had a stepmother who treated you really badly, made you feel you had no value, made you feel not accepted. Probably she herself have been a little girl who felt she had no value. She couldn't heal from that and she is in pain and that's why she's giving that same pain she has to others. She is giving you the same thing she is feeling. So imagine if you will want to revenge from what she did to you. You will want to give her the exact same pain that she made you feel. Well, you don't need to do that. Because that pain you felt, she was feeling it already. She has been feeling it all her life. And she was feeling it exactly at the same time that she was hurting you. So there is nothing to bring back because she herself has been suffering from the exact same thing that she is giving to others. Understanding that will help all of you to forgive because even if it looks like one is the bad one who is hurting the other one, it may look like one is the powerful one who is giving pain to others, but it's not real because that same pain he's giving, he has it. So it's all on the same painful vibration, what you give and what you have inside. And by revenging, you are just keeping yourself in that ugly low vibration that that person who hurt you was in. But it's not just about not acting on it, not doing anything to revenge from somebody. It's about deeply feeling that you don't want to revenge. Because the actions you do are as real as all you wish and feel. Even if those things are invisible, that doesn't mean are not real. If you store a deep feeling of revenge towards somebody, it's very likely that you will meet that person on your next life. You will meet that person and your mind will not remember that person. 
you will think is somebody that you just met. But that feeling of revenge is in, will be imprinted on your spirit. And you will have a big need and a big impulse of hurting that person. And you will, probably. So if you don't want to get trapped into this karma cycle, you have to not just work on not revenging, but on feeling that you don't want to. I have to tell you a little bit about karma. I will talk about it more in another message, but please don't think it's punishment, because it's not, and it's not a fixed destiny. I will use two imaginary people to talk about this karma trap. We will call one John and the other one Elizabeth. Let's say they are married, and John is a terrible husband, is aggressive and is abusing Elizabeth for all her life. She cannot divorce because maybe she's not allowed because of her culture. So she spends all her life being abused and just keeping quiet, saying nothing about it to anyone. She doesn't do anything about it, but she stores a big resentment inside towards him. She will carry this resentment after her death, and guess what? She will reincarnate as a man. She will meet John again, who now will be a woman, and she will feel a strong need to hurt her. His mind will not know that, but he will be executing the revenge he always wanted when he was a woman himself in his past life. So Elizabeth, now turned into a man, an abusing man, will hurt John, now turned into a woman. So John have been the victim in this life. If John doesn't forgive Elizabeth and keeps this resentment inside, what will happen is that he will reincarnate again. Now he will be the man and he will be very attracted by his own energy to meet Elizabeth and to really hurt her. Not even knowing that he is executing a revenge and not even knowing that he is revenging for something that he did himself on the first place. Because yes, in the past life, he was an abused woman and he was hurted, but before that life, he was the abuser. And they will just meet again and again, bringing the pain back to each other, till thousands of lives goes by and they don't will even remember who started that on the first place because now it just became this cycle of revenge and they are forced to meet again and again even to be born on the same family and the only way to break that repetitive dark cycle is if one of them forgives two things can happen actually Let's say now we are in a lifetime where John is supposed to hurt Elizabeth, to revenge. One possibility is that Elizabeth, even if she gets hurted, fully forgives John with all her heart and spirit and doesn't carry this resentment and this wish of revenge. The other possibility is that John somehow gets into a higher vibration, maybe by loving himself, maybe by experiencing joy in life. So when he meets Elizabeth, even if he carried in his soul this, this feeling of hurting her, he can go through that without doing it. He can let that go because he's in a higher vibration now. That is what Jesus was talking about when he said that the truth will set you free. Because when you understand that, you understand that forgiveness is liberating you not just from a current bad event, but from future bad events, even from your future life. And it's also liberating all those who were involved in that dark cycle of pain and giving them a chance to move on from that to a different vibration. So you are not just liberating yourself, but many people around you. And you will be free and you will be completely liberated from the things which hurted you. 
not just that, but by forgiving, by all the process that you will have gone through to achieve forgiveness, you will be even better than before because you will have been forced to go deep in your spirit to find light, to find light enough in order to forgive that person, to find more compassion and even be more compassionate and understanding with yourself. And probably you will have learned and unlocked a lesson that you had to learn from long, long ago. So after all, you will have gained freedom and beauty. Beauty in the higher sense of the world because of that bad experience. And you will see that it doesn't matter if you didn't have a perfect life or if you felt different than the others. Because you will see that the only, only thing which is actually real is what you have inside and who you are inside. The beauty that you store in your spirit, believe me, it's the only thing which can give you actual happiness. And I know that many of you feel that you had to go through more lessons than the rest of people. You feel that life was or is extra hard to you. You feel that others have it easier even if they don't have the compassion and the human qualities that you have. Please don't ever think that is because you have to pay for something or because you were bad in your past life. Karma is not as simple as I explained in this message. Indeed, this kind of karma cycles happen many times. But sometimes it gets more complicated as some debts may be kept and come back after millions of lives. And sometimes the cause of suffering is not about karma, but about your mission on earth. I will talk more about karma in another message. Just please don't have this simplistic idea that whatever that happens to you is because you were bad in your past life. Because that is reducing the concept of karma into a very simple and true idea. Because I'm sure all of you have seen very lightful people and good-hearted people go through situations which doesn't match that high vibration at all. I just wanted to explain with a simple, understandable example what a karma trap is and what a karma cycle is. I mean a karma cycle between two people. Forgiveness is a key ingredient for life extension, rejuvenation. It's a key ingredient to go back to your original divine pattern and to not fall into deterioration. Humans need to stay on earth for longer than they stay now in order to create this evolutionary change that earth needs. Dying is also a choice, a legitimate choice you all have. But why not to stay longer? In any case, if you still had to learn something, you will come back anyway. Why not to already renew yourself while you are alive and transcend anything that you have to transcend? Remember, every cell of your body vibrates with eternal forgiveness and with eternal youth.